Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. And in this video, we are going to look into five tricks or features that every Java developer should know in 2025. Well, let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. All right, so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video. So five Java tricks every developer should know. And these are basically five features of Java that we are going to look into in this particular video. These are the newly introduced features inside Java that you must know as a Java developer. So let's get started with the first one. Now let's jump into the code directly. So if you see over here, let me zoom it a bit so that it's clearly visible. Now if you see over here, we have a class inside which we have a main method. Here we have an array list and we are adding some data inside array and just printing it over here by using iterators. Now if I run this code, you will see that the results are printed over here in the uppercase format, right? But now this array list can simply be converted to a var keyword. So there is a var keyword introduced in Java 10, which is used to infer the type of your right hand side automatically. Now what new array list will return? It will obviously return array list. So the type of your names variable will be array list over here. Now if I run this code again, you will see that we are getting the same output. Now you might think that is it a dynamic typing? something like JavaScript, right? But it is not a dynamically typing. It is, this is something which will be resolved at compile time only. So it is still compile time. It will just be return the value of your right hand side and attach it to this particular variable. So simple stuff, basically. So this type inference by using var keyword does not make your Java dynamically typed. Java is still statically typed language. Now you can go ahead and use var keyword when you know what exactly is the output is going to be. Like here in this case, you know that this is going to be an array list, right? So it is readable. But in some formats, you should avoid making use of a var keyword. For example, let's say you have a code like this where compute is returning something and you are catching it inside a var keyword. Now you won't know what exactly is type of var until you go inside compute method and see what exactly it is returning. Now it is not a readable code. So in this particular cases, you should not go ahead and make use of a var keyword. Var keyword is very good if you want to make use of in such cases where you are declaring variables or you are making use of it inside a for loop or Java streams, then it makes sense and you can just directly go ahead and use it. So that is basically your first feature. If you know Java, you must know that there is a var keyword inside Java as well. So that is basically our first feature. Now let's jump to the next one. And the next one is basically text blocks. And this was introduced in Java 15. Now if I go inside a code and here if you see, let me zoom it again. So here, if you see, we have this particular chunk. Let's say you want to add a multi-line string. Let's say there is a JSON object or SQL script, or it could be kind of a HTML as well. What do we do? We do something like this, right? We make use of this quotes. We make use of slash and we make use of plus to join them. And at the end, we will get the entire string. Now, if I run this code, you will see that we are getting this particular JSON object. But this is kind of a messy stuff, right? You need to carefully do it. What if you have a large SQL script and you are trying to write this, right? It is not readable and it is not a feasible approach. Lot of efforts. Finally, Java introduced something called as text blocks, which looks something like this. You can just go ahead and include that in triple quote and you will be able to just add a JSON or let's say any kind of multi line string over here. Now, if I run this code, it will again work in similar fashion. How cool is that? Now, if in case inside your project, you are making use of Java 15 or more, you should make use of this to store your large strings or multi line strings, right? It is a very cool stuff that Java has introduced. So that is basically the second one. Let's go back over here. So that is basically the second one. And the next one is pattern matching for instance of so let's go inside a code. So here, if you see, we have this code example over here. Now, let's say you have an object, right? And we make use of instance of to check if it is an instance of string or whatever may be the object, right? So once we check that it is an instance of string, then what we do, we first go ahead and typecast it to that particular string. And after that, we make use of it, right? So if object is not instance of string, then this typecast will go ahead and fail, right? So that's why we add this particular if check first to check if it is an instance of string. After that, we do this typecasting. Now, if I run this code, it will just work fine. Right, we are getting this particular output, no problem. But now this is kind of an overhead, right? So this is first check and then typecast, right? So for this overhead, Java has introduced something called as pattern matching for instance of. After Java 16, what you can do, you can just say object 
instance of string and just directly catch it inside a variable now you don't really need to go ahead and do type casting if object is an instance of string then it will automatically be added inside this particular s and type casted automatically you can directly go ahead and use it this particular expression will return true and inside this particular if case you will get this particular variable which is already type casted now if i run this code you will see that we are getting the same output so this particular overhead of type casting explicitly will be removed if you start using this so if you are using java 16 go ahead and explore this so that is basically the third one pattern matching for instance of all right so let's proceed to the next one and next one is modern switch expressions so if i go back over here let me open this particular example over here now if you see over here these are basically the traditional switch cases now if you see over here we have integer day as 3 it will accept this particular day and let's say for case 1 case 2 case 3 i want to put type as workday case 4 case 5 i want to add still workday and default i want to add weekend right so this is basically a traditional switch case so if you see over here we have a overhead of break over here we have repeated break statements we have different case over here all these cases we need same output but we still need to mention this like that it is kind of a verbose approach now after java 14 something called as switch expressions came into picture and you can directly go ahead and create something like this now this is a different syntax for case 1 2 3 you can directly go ahead put an arrow and return the output for 4 5 you can directly put an arrow return the output for default you put an arrow and return the output so this is basically more readable format and here you can just go ahead and pass object as well for example let's say you have this particular case now you have object which is basically a string over here that we know that it is a string now here to switch expression i'm passing this particular object now if it is a string then you can just go ahead and directly make use of that particular string to calculate the length and it will just return the length same with the integer if it is an integer it will just print the value if it is not string or integer then it will go to default one now if i run this code then you will see that we are getting this particular length of a string not only that from switch expressions you can return output as well if you see over here you can generate the output let's say 4 is 85 now now if you see over here for 10 and 9 we are returning a which is just fine right but for 8 what we are doing we are trying to print now we are putting a block over here now how to return from a block you can just make use of a yield keyword to return yield keyword is used to return values from your switch expression cases now if i run this code you will see that we are getting the respective output which is b over here so that is how you can return values from switch expressions from these blocks basically by using a yield keyword so that is basically about the modern switch expressions after that at the end we have records right so let's jump into the record directly if you see over here let's say we have this particular entity right so it is kind of a pojo over here let's say we have a user entity and we have name and age over here now what do we do we create a constructor we create getter setter we override to string and equals method now it is a simple pojo but it is becoming a lot of code over here right now here i can just create a new user and i can just make use of it but now java has introduced something called as records now records are a new and concise way to declare your data carriers now you can just go ahead and define your variables over here name and age and that's it you can just directly go ahead and use it like this it is pretty similar to your pojo it will provide you constructor it will provide you getters like this so you can just go ahead and access it like this and since these are immutable objects records are basically immutable you will not get any set method over here so you cannot just go ahead and do set over here there is no set method basically so records are immutable ideally your entities should also be immutable objects so now your 50 lines of code is basically converted to just one liner here inside records you can also go ahead and add some methods like this if you want to and make use of this particular method as and when you need you can also go ahead and declare some final variable static final variable if you need and you can directly go ahead and access it for example let me just return 5 from here and i will just go back over here to record after example and here you can just go ahead and access your method distance squared or you can just go ahead and say u dot version over here which is basically a static final string that we have defined over here so you can just go ahead and do something like that as well now if i run this code it will just work fine and give us all the data that is basically record for you this is easily one of the most impactful feature added inside java for years so you can go ahead and explore records it is something which was added inside java 16 plus so if you 
use java 16 inside your project you should go ahead and explore records as well so those are basically the five features or five java tricks every developer should know in 2025 if you want me to create videos on any of these topics or any other topics in more detail let me know in the comment section if you think there are more new features every java developer should know put them in the comment section so that others are aware of it that is basically it for this particular video if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet share this video with your friends so that they are also aware about these particular new features of java that's it for this video see you in the next video